When Chicago traded former NBA MVP Derrick Rose to New York this summer, it was perfectly natural for Knicks fans to get excited. Having slogged through a number of years of uninspiring play, while simultaneously turning the triangle offense into a four-letter word, the Knickerbockers and their fans needed some fresh blood. Before we get into how Derrick Rose will fit into the offense, it's important to understand a couple of things. First, how might new coach Jeff Hornacek incorporate the triangle into his offense, and which version of Derrick Rose will we get? Let's take a peek into some of Hornacek's sets to get a handle on what he liked to run in Phoenix and how it might be altered a bit to fit some of the triangle's principles. One of the more popular options in the triangle is pinch post, where the guard out top hits the cutter at the elbow, then follows his pass back around for a handoff or some sort of two-man game. This is classic pinch post from the Suns as Drogic finishes the layup. The secondary attack of the pinch post gets you pistol action, and here's an example of Drakic getting a dribble handoff into an inside ball screen, which gets deep penetration, a good shot, and a tip slam. If the handoff doesn't happen, the wing can use the inside ball screen, try and draw the defense in, then kick it out for the open three. And high post splits have a lot in common with the triangle offense, one with the catch at the elbow, and two when the wing and corner split in front of him. This handoff action is again right out of the triangle, as is this mini weave, and the flow never stops until they can find an opening to get into the lane. Even something as simple as a low post feed with a corner baseline speed cut is the basic triangle, and gets a nice ISO post up with plenty of space to work with. Handoffs are a staple of the triangle, so is setting an off-ball screen and then having that screener go screen for the ball, particularly an inside screen at the wing. One could easily picture Mello feasting in this position after the good movement to clear him space. And here's a two-guard front, right out of the triangle, plus blind pig action where the weak side elbow flashes and the weak side guard backdoor cuts. This turns into elbow get, and very little way of stopping it. So you can understand why it wouldn't be horribly difficult for Jeff Hornacek to build upon what already exists in his offense and maintain most of the triangle's principles. Now let's get to Rose, who had a decent year last year, but clearly has not recaptured his pre-injury dominance. During his MVP year, he was most effective in isolation, and it's clear he just doesn't have the quickness and explosion to get to the hole anytime he wants anymore. Last year, he was decent running the pick and roll, relying on pull-up jumpers, and his one-footed floater. But the majority of the shots he created for himself tended to be very difficult to make. And his propensity to leave his feet to make a pass has been his Achilles heel his entire career, and is a big stain on whomever coached him in his past, and never taught him the when and how to use a jump pass properly. There are still games where he'll jump to make a pass on almost all of his passes, and it simply drives me insane. That said, we do know that Tom Thibodeau ran the triangle quite often in Chicago, so Rose won't be foreign to its concepts and how to find holes to exploit. While this is the UCLA high post offense, it's a cousin to the triangle, and Rose reads the defense well on this cut. Cutting him through as a guard and coming off a pin down into a dribble handoff from Joe Kim Noah was a very viable action for Rose to get space and enable him to use his talents to score. Here is pure pinch post, where he blends his athletic ability with good team action to open up an easy shot for him. And if he would just accept being off the ball a little bit more, he can enjoy another triangle action, sprinting across the floor around a double pin down into a dribble handoff and to the hole for an easy score. Now, let's address the criticism of New York's triangle offense and that it didn't generate enough three-point shooting and pick and rolls. The offense itself is flexible and allows the individual player to maximize the spacing to his talents. Here's Sasha Vujicic running straight pinch posts, but instead of cutting around the high side and attacking the rim, he stops, cuts back behind the line, and gets a wide open three. 
Here's more pinch post run all the way through to the right side, and rather than pass to Derek Williams at the elbow, they've modified this into a pick and roll, sucking the defense down below the free throw line and getting a wide open three on the pop. And more of the beautiful game, as you can see how positions are interchangeable. Now, Sasha is playing the pinch post, and when Aflalo runs his route off the pinch to the corner, he's wide open on the kick out. Carmelo's gravity can be used to great advantage in the triangle offense, like here where he rubs off the center opposite, has space to attack, and then creates the open shot for a teammate on the right wing. And this is the high post series out of the triangle, and the key is the spacing and flow. Jerry and Grant can shoot the three, so he shoots the curve until the ball can find him for a rhythm jump shot, all within the normal confines of the triangle offense. As for the pick and roll, that modification we showed you early out of pinch post is such an easy addition to accommodate Rose. When he catches the ball out top, have the pinch post player just keep going to ball screen. There is good action on the weak side to occupy the defense, and a guy like Rose should be able to get into the middle for good shots. When the Knicks do go to the high post series, after the guard makes a UCLA cut, the center then turns to set an inside ball screen, all automatic actions that have been run out of the triangle since its inception. And the corner pass triggers a back screen by the center, who then turns and sets the ball screen. The corner pick and roll is rare outside of the triangle, yet it's one of the best places on the floor to run pick and roll. And again, it's been built into the offense since Tex Winter invented the damn thing. As for some of the other additions, we've seen how well Noah can pass out of the high post in triangle action, so he should fit in seamlessly and allow the offense to run even better than it ever has in New York. Courtney Lee is a nice role player who can fit into any team, and he's got the ability to really stroke it from three on a lot of catch and shoots, the kind of shots the offense should find for him with Rose and Noah putting pressure on the defense. Carmelo Anthony has really struggled to shoot well since the triangle came to town, but it certainly is more of a function of poor roster construction around him than a slight on his individual talents. He should get back to his career field goal percentage of 45%, and I'm willing to bet with much better talent around him this year, his three-point stroke will get back on track and he'll make at least 37% of them. Porzingis is the real key, and he's had moments of real clarity in the triangle, where he's been able to hunt great low post position and do real damage against his shorter opponent, whomever guards him. And with the triangle calling for so much movement on the weak side, he's been enabled to make his bum rushes to the rim for tip slam, after tip slam, after poster, after highlight. The interchangeable position should really help him the most, allowing him to start on the wing on one possession, forcing his man to guard him as a perimeter player all the way through, and then shift to a low post player on the next possession where he can abuse his man with nice touch and extreme length. The odd man out as I see it is Brandon Jennings, a very curious signing to say the least, but it's possible they can find a microwave off the bench roll for him, where the offense runs the most pick and rolls and isos in much the same way the Clippers used Jamal Crawford. Last year's Knicks won 32 games amidst the coaching change and general chaos from all sides. They ranked 24th offensively, and a surprising, in a good way, 18th in defensive rating. I can almost guarantee they will be more efficient on offense by adding Hornacek's faster paced layer on top of the triangle offense fundamentals. And if Noah is healthy, along with Courtney Lee and Porzingis having real defensive value, then their defense should improve. And that means more wins for a New York market that's been desperate to cheer for something tangible for quite a long while.